welcome back to Combat Mission, where we're going to take a look at German Grenadier Company weapons, organisations and tactics in World War II. This is a bit more complex than usual, because in the period covered by Combat Mission so far, the company TOE changes five times. We have the 43A, 43B and 43C variants, 44A and 44B variants, and a 45 variant. So this is going to get complicated. And to show it all off, I'm primarily going to be using Fortress Italy purely because it covers the entire time span. German infantry formations become available in Fortress Italy in September 1943, corresponding to the Allied invasion of mainland Italy. So the first formation available has the 43A organization. Starting right at the bottom, individual riflemen are armed with a Car 98K. This is a bolt-action rifle firing 7.92mm Mauser from a 5-round Integral magazine, reloaded by stripper clips. While the bullets will carry a lot further, troops in-game won't engage targets beyond 500 meters, and at this range the Car 98K is only likely to be effective when massed. Individual riflemen are only going to start to be effective inside 300 meters. There are six riflemen in a squad, plus four other soldiers. The squad leader, the assistant squad leader, a machine gunner, and a rifle grenadier, for a total of ten. The squad leader is armed with an MP40 submachine gun, firing 9mm ammunition from a 32 round magazine at a rate of about 500 rounds per minute. The effective range is necessarily short because it's using pistol ammunition. Troops will only engage targets inside 200 meters. On top of the SMG, the squad leader also carries a pair of binoculars. The assistant squad leader may be armed with a few different weapons, including the standard Car 98K. He might carry the platoon's scoped Car 98K. This has a 4 times optic mounted, extending the effective range of the rifle against point targets out to about 800 meters. He might also carry a G41. This is a semi-automatic rifle, also firing 8mm Mauser, but feeding from a 10 round magazine. Historically, the G41 was not a great bit of kit and was pretty quickly superseded, but we'll get to that later. Next we have the machine gunner, who is at this point usually armed with an MG34. Again, this uses 8mm Mauser ammunition, but is fully automatic, firing at 8 to 900 rounds per minute. The MG34 is a GPMG, a general purpose machine gun, which essentially means that it can be used in multiple roles. Here it's being used in the light machine gun role being fired from the bipod. The high rate of fire is a reaction to the reality of fleeting battlefield targets. The theory being that the more round go a target's way before they disappear, the more likely one of them is to score a hit. The machine gunner also carries a P38 pistol. This is semi-automatic, holds 8 rounds and actually having to use it generally means things have gone very wrong somewhere. Finally, one of the riflemen has a Car 98K equipped with the Schiesbecker attachment. This is basically a holder on the end of the rifle, into which 30mm rifle grenades can be inserted. The user then loads a special cartridge into the rifle and when this is fired it propels the rifle grenade out of the holder towards the enemy. This allows the firing of rifle grenades out to about 280 meters, and the rifle grenadier carries three 30mm high explosive grenades and two anti-tank grenades. There are a couple of issues with these. Firstly, the rifle grenades themselves are pretty small. The HE grenade can't fit that much explosive in it, so it doesn't have a large area of effect. And the AT grenade uses a heat or shaped charge warhead, which is limited by the size of the projectile. It's not incapable of penetrating allied armor, but it can have some very disappointing post-penetration effects. Secondly, because they travel at relatively low speed and have a high angle trajectory, actually hitting things is quite difficult. Assuming three grenades to trial and error on target, the rifle grenadier here just doesn't really have the ammunition to really be effective. So, those are the weapons of the rifle squad. In the 43A organization, the squad is split into three fire teams. An A team, with the squad leader, the rifle grenadier and a rifleman. The B team, with the assistant squad leader, the machine gunner and two riflemen carrying ammunition. And finally, the C team, with the remaining three riflemen. With this kind of organisation we have a pretty clear setup. The B team with the machine gun forms a fire element, while the A and C teams form a two-part manoeuvre element that can conduct its own organic fire and movement if necessary. It is all about the machine gun though, this is the source of the squad's firepower. As such it's very unevenly distributed, it's all in the hands of the machine gunner who should be set up in the best position and kept safe, 
while the other members of the squad support him by feeding him ammunition and protecting his flanks. Altogether, the squad carries 1,710 rounds of 8mm Mauser, which is shared by almost all the weapons. There are also 248 rounds of 9mm, mostly carried by the squad leader for his MP40, but the machine gunner also carries a few for his backup pistol. On top of this, there are 5 rifle grenades for the Schiesbecker, and a total of 20 hand grenades. There are 4 of these squads in a platoon, led by a 3-man platoon HQ. This consists of the platoon leader, a lieutenant, armed with an MP40, the platoon sergeant, a Feldwebel, armed with an MP40 or a P38, and a radio operator armed with a Car 98K. There are three platoons like this in a company, led by a company HQ. This is five men strong, a Hauptmann as company commander, and his two IC, both armed with MP40s, then three riflemen, including a radio man. So that's the 43A type. There are three things that really stand out about this organization. Firstly, it has four rifle squads per platoon, so it has square platoons. This means the platoon has more options than the more common triangular organization. A platoon attack, for example, can be mounted with a small one-man assault element, backed up by a large three-squad fire support element, or that can be flipped to have a large assault element and a small fire support element, or balanced to have two squads attacking and two in support. Secondly, the company has no heavy weapons. It's a pure rifle infantry organization. This is somewhat offset by the fact that each squad has a GPMG. Although there are no specific weapons teams in the company, it actually has 12 organic MG34s. But it does mean that to get heavy machine gun or mortar support, the company needs to be backed up by the battalion weapons company. Thirdly, the company has very anemic anti-tank firepower. The only organic anti-tank weapons are the 30mm AT grenades from the Schiesbecker, which, as we've already covered here, have in combat mission at least some problems with accuracy and low ammunition supply. From a company perspective, we can also add limited range to that. Although there are 12 rifle grenadiers in the company, the short 280m maximum range means it's difficult for them to mutually support one another, which makes for an interesting comparison to the machine guns, which can. So armoured vehicles, and especially tanks, are not something that the 43A company is well equipped to deal with. If it's likely to face those threats, it really needs backup from other sources. It needs anti-tank guns, friendly tanks, assault guns, or tank destroyers attached. The 43A organisation is available up until the end of 1943, but the 43B variant becomes available in November 43. This features a couple of significant changes. Going back down to the rifle squad, this has been reorganised, its strength has been reduced from 10 soldiers to 9, dropping a rifleman, and it's now organised into two fire teams instead of three. This doesn't really change the general tactical handling of the squad, it's still built around the machine gun, but in combat mission terms, not having the C team means a little bit of flexibility is gone. In the attack now, for example, the assault element is a single block instead of two, so it can't perform its own fire and movement under the protection of the machine gun. However, the effectiveness of fire and movement when conducted by five bolt action rifles and a single submachine gun compared to the fire of something like an MG34 is pretty questionable, so it might not actually be that much of a loss. Speaking of machine guns, by this time the MG42 is starting to crop up in both 43A and 43B organisations. This is essentially a development of the MG34 designed for mass production. The fire rate has increased up to 1,200 rounds per minute, but it otherwise functions exactly the same as far as we're concerned. Each platoon has also lost an entire squad, so that the square organisation is gone and platoons have three squads instead of four. This effectively reduces the strength of the platoon by 25%. There's also been a slight change in the platoon HQ organisation. The assistant platoon leader is now gone, and two riflemen have been added in, so the HQ now has a strength of four. One of these new soldiers carries a new weapon, the Panzerfaust. In particular, either a Panzerfaust 30 or a Panzerfaust 30K for climb or small. The Panzerfaust is a single shot anti tank weapon, functionally a recoilless rifle with a shaped charge warhead. The 30 refers to the range in meters, so this early model can only be fired out of 30 meters. It has a pretty steep ballistic arc to its trajectory, so it's not the easiest thing to aim, but it hits hard. 
Cheap charge explosives work by inverting a copper cone to form a jet. The bigger the diameter of the cone, the more penetration you get. The Panzerfaust 30K has a 100mm wide warhead. Its bigger brother, the Panzerfaust 30, also known as the Panzerfaust Gross for big, has a 200mm wide warhead. These are both significantly larger than the 30mm warhead of the Schiesbecker and can punch holes in the frontal armour of Allied Germans with no problem whatsoever, inflicting significant post-penetration damage. The main drawbacks are the short range, 30 meters is distressingly close, the fact that there is only one per platoon at this stage, and the back blast. When fired, half the exhaust gases push the projectile out of the tube and the other half go out the back. These have to go somewhere, and if that somewhere is a confined space, like inside a building, then the sudden pressure change makes that confined space very dangerous. Soldiers can fire weapons with backblast from inside buildings in combat mission, but they're probably going to be suppressed or even lightly injured if they do so. The Company HQ is the same, except one of the riflemen also gets a Panzerfaust, but the Company has been beefed up by the addition of a medium mortar section. This consists of a three-man section HQ, an Unterfeld Weibel or junior sergeant with an MP14 binoculars, and two riflemen plus two mortar team. Each team consists of four soldiers, an Obergefreiter or senior lance corporal with an MP40, a rifleman and two mortar operators armed with P38 pistols, plus a two-man ammo bearer team armed with rifles. The mortar itself is the 8cm Granatwerfer 34, which is an 81mm mortar firing from 54 to 2400 meters. It's man portable, splitting into pieces that take 46 seconds for a regular team to set up and 34 for them to break down. The mortar crew itself carries a total of 16 high explosive bombs and two smoke bombs. The ammo bearers carry an extra 16 HE and four smoke for a total of 36. The addition of a medium mortar section down at company level is an interesting choice. These haven't come out of nowhere, they were previously in the Grenadier Battalion Weapons Company and they're being displaced to the rifle companies by shiny new 120mm mortars. Regardless, having medium mortars at company level brings some interesting implications in terms of responsiveness and concentration. On the one hand, the mortars are now much more responsive, they are under the direct control of the company commander and he can order them about instead of having to request support from the battalion mortar platoon. It's notable that the mortar section doesn't have its own radio, so if it's going to be involved in indirect fire, it's probably going to have to be somewhat co-located with the company HQ, especially in a combat mission context where things like field telephones aren't really modelled. However, this increased responsiveness comes at the cost of concentration of fire. A single mortar section can only do so much, and the mortar platoon of the previous organization's weapons company, three sections for a total of six mortars, can do a lot more. Because of the range of the mortars, up to 2,400 meters, they're likely to be able to support all three rifle companies and engage targets to some depth, so splitting them up and subordinating them directly to the company commanders may not be an efficient use of resources. So we've seen some changes, although the rifle platoons are now triangular, that is they have three squads instead of four, and they lose a bit of flexibility, the Germans have taken a few steps to beef up the company's overall firepower by adding in the mortar section and a tiny bit more anti-tank capability. The main difference though is that reduction in manpower, why would the Germans want to do something like that? This has a lot less to do with trying to make the company leaner and more agile, and a lot more to do with the fact that the German army in 1943 is well on its way to a serious manpower crisis. It's important to remember that these organisations represent the ideal manual standard and that in reality the decrease in company size from 43A to 43B is really an adjustment to the fact that most rifle companies are under strength. Most platoons only have enough men for three squads anyway. In January 1944, the 43C organisation completely replaces both the 43A and 43B types. This is essentially the 43B, but with two minor changes. The first is the introduction of a new weapon to the TOE, the Panzerschreck. This has a smaller warhead than the Panzerfaust at 88mm, still enough to punch holes in pretty much any Allied tank, but having self-propelled rocket projectiles, it has a much longer 200m range, a flatter trajectory, and is reusable. These are operated by two-man teams attached to each platoon. 
the soldier with the Panzerfaust has a backup P38 pistol, and his buddy is armed with a Car 98K. Between them, they carry six rockets. This is a much more effective AT weapon than the Schiesbecker, though it does come with the Panzerfaust backblast problems, namely dangerous in confined spaces, and even out in the open, backblast can kick up a lot of dust that gives the weapon's position away. Hand in hand with this is a change in the organisation of individual squads. In combat mission terms, there are now two variants, Grenadier squads and Standard squads. Very simply, Grenadier squads retain the Schiesbecker, while Standard squads don't. They replace the Rifle Grenadier with a normal Rifleman. An even more minor change is that the replacement of the G41 with the G43 starts to take place in the 43C organisation. The G43 is essentially a more reliable G41, there's no practical difference in combat mission. Of these two changes, the introduction of the Panzerstreck teams is by far the most important, especially in combat mission. The Schiesbecker is decidedly lacklustre due to its problems in accuracy and low ammunition, so having the choice to leave it behind by choosing Grenadier or Standard squads is neither here nor there. The much more effective anti-tank capability, the Panzerstreck, however, gives each platoon the organic ability to hit enemy tanks and other vehicles out to 200 meters. Obviously, shots inside that range, and especially inside 100 meters, are likely to be much more effective, and they're certainly not substitutes for longer range anti-tank guns like the Pac-40, but the Panzerstreck is a weapon that allied tankers need to treat with respect. By May 1944, however, the 43C organization is gone and has been replaced by the 44 type. Again, this mostly involves minor changes. The biggest of these is that the mortar section is now out and has been replaced by a heavy machine gun section. This is armed with MG34s or MG42s, which can be fired from the bipod like those in the rifle squads, but can also be deployed on tripods. These are quicker to set up and pack down than the mortars at 10 and 14 seconds respectively, and the stability of the tripod allows them to fire out to 2,000 meters. Spotting a target and putting effective fire on it at that kind of range is pretty optimistic, but the stability also obviously helps in a more sustained fire roll for closer engagements. The machine gun itself is operated by a machine gunner with a backup pistol, the team is led by an NCO with an MP40, and there are four additional men with rifles. These are primarily there to carry ammunition. Overall, the team carries 2,510 rounds of 8mm Mauser. As 1944 progresses, new weapons start to appear, and the availability of certain weapons increases. These changes are pretty random, and are reflected better in the date than any actual TOE changes, similar to how the G41 and the MG34 have gradually been replaced by the G43 and the MG42 as time has gone on. So instead of trying to put dates on them, it's a lot easier to say that there are more of these weapons floating around inside the company at the end of 1944 than there are when the 44 type organisation kicks in in May. There are two weapons in question here, the MP44 and the Panzerfaust 60. The MP44 is the famous Sturmgewehr, the first assault rifle. This fires a cut down 8mm Mauser cartridge, 7.92mm Kurtz, which basically preserves the performance of the 8mm Mauser round inside 500 meters, a more realistic maximum range for infantry small arms, but with decreased recoil, allowing the weapon to be controllable in fully automatic fire. Or in other words, the MP44 can function as a rifle at longer ranges and a submachine gun at closer ranges, which is really helpful. Infantry squads now no longer need to balance long and short range firepower by finding the right mix of ammunition incompatible weapons they can all have assault rifles. Unfortunately for Germany, they never come close to replacing either the Car 98K or the MP40 with the MP44 before the war is over. So instead of actually making the entire squad ammunition compatible, all this does is introduce a third type of ammunition instead and makes the problem worse. The second weapon is the Panzerfaust 60. This is almost self-explanatory. It's the Panzerfaust 30, but with double the range at 60 meters. This also becomes much more prevalent as the war progresses, finding its way into the rifle squads who can have 3, 4 or even more by the end of 1944. To jazz things up, because this isn't complicated enough, there is also a 44B type. This is only present in combat mission Red Thunder on the Eastern Front from July 1944 onwards. So it's not in Battle for Normandy, Final Blitzkrieg or Fortress Italy, these just have a Type 44 organisation. 
but 44B is an interesting transitional organization leading up to the big changes in 1945. The difference boils down to the option in combat mission to designate the first platoon in the company as a Sturm platoon. This is a radical alteration in the TOE to try and concentrate as many assault rifles in the same place. The platoon now consists of a platoon HQ, two Sturm squads, a heavy Sturm squad and a rifle grenade section. The platoon HQ has seen the least change, with the same number of men, but an increase in automatic weapons, especially MP44s. The new Sturm squad organization has eight men instead of nine, but seven of them are now armed with MP44s. The remaining soldier acts as a designated marksman carrying a G43 with a four times scope. Aside from now being completely full of MP44s, the other major change here is that there is now no machine gun in the squad. So tactically speaking, the Sturm squad now splits into two pretty even elements for fire and maneuver. But although those elements have considerably more firepower than rifle equipped teams, they don't have the firepower or range of the MG34 or MG42. There does seem to be some acknowledgement of this. The third squad is now a heavy Sturm squad, which swaps one of the MP44s out for a machine gunner to give the platoon at least one machine gun. The whole thing is supplemented by a three-man rifle grenadier section who are all armed with Car98Ks mouthing the Schiespecker. Noticeably absent is the Panzerschreck attached to the platoon in the 44A organisation. However, the rest of the company is the same. The other six rifle squads retain their machine guns, are predominantly armed with rifles and have the option to include a rifle grenadier. This gives us a very clear distinction between fire and manoeuvre elements at company level. The Sturm platoon is the manoeuvring assault element to be supported by the other two platoons acting as a base of fire. After this little Red Thunder exclusive interlude, all the titles switched to the 45 type organization in February 1945. As 44B is pretty much the prototype transitional type for this, it's pretty similar. The first platoon of the company is now a Sturm platoon. It's not an option like in 44B, it's now fixed in the TOE. It's not exactly the same either. The platoon HQ is now likely to be completely armed with automatic weapons. The two Sturm squads have nine men again. The first platoon heavy Sturm squad now has two MGs and the Panzerschreck team is back. The second and third platoons have also been tweaked. They've also picked up the rifle grenade team and the rifle squads have been somewhat confusingly renamed heavy Sturm squads. These are not organized the same way as the heavy Sturm squad in the first platoon. They are just grenadier squads with one less man for a total of eight. Presumably the missing soldier in each squad has been sent to the rifle grenade team. The rifle squad also seems to be less well equipped with semi and fully automatic weapons. The assistant squad leader has picked up an MP40, but apart from the squad leader and the machine gunner, everybody else seems to be carrying the old Car 98K. This is probably the result of concentrating all the MP44s and G43s in the Sturm platoon. The other major tweak to the company is the removal of the machine gun section, so the company doesn't have any organic heavy weapons anymore. Instead, it has a three-team Panzerschreck section. This is in addition to the Panzerschreck teams in the platoon, so the company has a total of six, a very impressive short-range anti-tank capability for the time. Some soldiers might also be carrying Panzerfaust 100s, which are Panzerfausts with an improved 100 meter range. Again, like 44B, this organization has the very clear first platoon maneuver assault element with a preponderance of automatic weapons, backed up by the second and third platoons with more machine guns intended to function as the base of fire, though with the added element of much increased anti-tank capability. The machine gun section is gone though. Ironically, we're back to the 43A organization where the company has no organic heavy weapons and if it's going to get heavy machine gun or mortar support, it needs to be integrated with the battalion's weapon company. So that is all five or five and a half types of German grenadier organizations modeled in combat mission. There are two final caveats to go along with this if anybody is still listening. First, these tables of organization and equipment represent ideals that are generally only rarely achieved in reality. Even in peacetime, units are frequently under strength and under equipped for one reason or another. In wartime, especially in a long attritional war of materiel, 
things are much worse. Secondly, there are limits to how much difference these changes in weapons, equipment and organisation can actually make. The heavy weapons attached to the company are one prime example. These aren't conjured out of thin air, they're present in the overarching battalion organisation anyway and have simply been shoveled about. The rifle companies aren't intended to operate individually, they're intended to operate as part of the battalion. So it's not like the transition from 43C to 44 means that Grenadier companies suddenly lose any chance of medium mortar support, or that the 43C companies had no support from heavy machine guns. Another good example is the degree to which individual weapons impact the combat power of the company. A soldier in 1945 armed with an MP44 assault rifle may have more personal firepower than his bolt action equipped counterpart from 1943, but in the wider context of the war, both soldiers are equally likely to be killed by allied artillery fire. Artillery doesn't care what firearm you've been issued, nor how your squad platoon or company have been organised. Or to put it another way, like everything else, any infantry company is a cog in a combined arms machine. There is only so much it can do itself, and there is only so much that can be achieved by making changes to its TOE. It's noticeable that the company organisation with the most firepower down at platoon level, the 45 organisation, is the one in use when the prospects for German military victory are completely non-existent. Still, this has been an interesting extended look at German Grenadier companies as modelled in combat mission from mid-1943 to the end of the war. Hope you all enjoyed it and it's cleared some things up for you, it definitely did for me. I'll catch you in the next video.